Well, on that note, let's also now introduce our keynote speaker, who in fact is the president of corporate strategy and business development of the Aditya Billa Group, with businesses in telecommunications, cement, chemicals, mining, textiles, financial services, retail, and e-commerce, amongst the others, in 36 countries. In fact, formally, he's also been the chairman and CEO of PepsiCo India, and he's also had stints with Nokia, Hindustan Unilever Limited, and Philips in the course of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome on stage Mr. D. Shivakumar. Okay. So, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the house is full, as uh, Vicky said uh, right before the start. Thank you, Sam, for inviting me here. Uh, I'm here only because you called me, and I felt that I had to do it for you. I've never, you know, ever uh, done a keynote for you. Also, lovely to see a number of friends here. There's uh, Ashok, there's Sudanshu, there's Vicky, there's Pratik. You know, lots of guys whom I've worked with, and I owe a lot to over the course of my career. Okay. So Sam called me and said, uh, choose your topic. And the topic I chose was chief marketing officer or chief growth officer. Okay, this is the debate that's happening. A few companies have renomenclated the chief marketing as officer as chief growth officer. So I said, okay, let's take a look at this and where does this go and where will this lead? Okay. So the CMO or CGO, as I call it, is it old wine in a new bottle? I have India's leading CMOs right through my slides. Okay, hopefully they'll pay me something for it. Okay, I haven't asked them for permission. So there's Anuradha from Mariko, there's Shashi from Idea, there's Siddharth from Vodafone, and there's Priya Nair from uh, Unilever. Okay, each of them uh, a big CEO in their own rights. Okay, let's look at marketing language to look at this and say, is this a restage or a relaunch of the CMO? Okay, is this a restage or a relaunch? So you've seen all of them. A restate simply means that packaging has changed. OK, so we've just changed the packaging of these four people and added a new funky hairstyle and said, OK, is the role being restaged? Which means absolutely no change except packaging. OK, so that's one argument. OK, now let's look at the next question, which is, is this a relaunch? And that's the crux of our argument. A relaunch means a complete makeover. Formula needs to change. Packaging needs to change, claim needs to change, and the whole package needs to come together to communicate with consumers. Is the CMO there right now as you start calling him a chief growth officer? So let's see how this uh, argument and logic goes forward. Okay. First question, why is this change happening? I think that's very important for all of us to understand. So my hypothesis, why is this change happening? So clearly, marketing is not getting its growth message. That's one reason it could be happening. Second, marketing protecting, it, protecting its own assets, saying, I need 100 crores. I will only be evaluated on brand power score, nothing else. I will be you know, evaluated on affinity. I'll be evaluated on top of mind, some such thing. So marketing protecting its own turf and saying, I'm oblivious to business realities. That's the reason it could be happening. Pressure on results, and people see a huge chunk of marketing money and no effectiveness. That's the other reason it could be happening. And the fourth is, it's likely that the profile or the background of the CEO is driving the CMO in this direction. Okay, so let's look at each of these hypotheses and see what happens. What's important to know is that there is never one pattern to growth. There's never one pattern to growth. Growth is a series of things which happen. There's never one pattern. So just designating it something and expecting growth to happen in my book doesn't work. Okay, so. In a digital world, it's very easy to get conversations. It's very easy to get feedback. So I asked Autumn to do me two word clouds. The first word cloud on chief marketing officer. The second word cloud on chief growth officer. OK, this is what comes up. These are word clouds for the last three months. First, chief marketing officer. If you look at this word cloud, we saw 23,000 conversations in the last quarter on chief marketing officer. OK, if you look at the Words here, the, sign the size of the word determines the strength of the conversation. Okay, the dominant theme here is technology and digital. There is accountability somewhere, one word somewhere there, okay? 
I also want you to notice that neither the consumer nor the brand appear significantly. They only appear once each. I assume people subsume that the chief CMO does something to do with brands and something to do with the consumer. I'm assuming that. If that is not so, then marketeers are in trouble, serious trouble, okay? Because the basic job is being challenged, okay? So I assume that and hopefully we'll be assured on that, okay? Now that's chief marketing officer, essentially digital. A lot of the commentary around what are you doing on digital, okay? Now let's look at chief growth officer. While chief marketing officer had 23,000 conversations, the chief growth officer has only 2,000. So clearly as a concept, it's not worthy of debate. So whoever, whichever company or whichever leader is saying I want to go CGO route, okay, he doesn't have much takers, okay? Only 2,000 conversations. Now if you look at it here, it is a necessity. It is about business. It is about growth. That's what they're saying. Okay, so people are saying, I can understand why the chief growth officer concept is needed. It's a necessity for business results, and to get growth, you need to do this. But in sheer scale terms, CMO wins 23,000 to CGO, which is just 2,000. Okay, so that's where we are right now. Now, let's look at the last point I made in that slide saying, is the background or profile of the CEO the reason why we are having a redesignation to CGO? So let's look at CEO profiles globally. First point, if you look at the academic backgrounds of the top CEOs, here's something you'll notice. Of European CEOs, one-fourth of European CEOs have a PhD. One-third of Chinese CEOs have a PhD. I never realized this. Thanks, Sam, for opening my eyes by doing this session. You know, it's amazing. Very rarely does this happen, but this is the trend right now. Look at India. India has the highest number of master's degrees of CEOs. Highest. Now to just think, in the 1930s, just before, just after the you know, recession, etc., the New York Times ran an article which said, educated people must rise to the top of the organization. Just 85 years ago. At that point of time, there was very little education. And everybody in business was homegrown, starting from the mail desk or security desk or whatever you want to call it. Today, you see a, a very different pattern, okay? So a fourth I mentioned. Next, a half the CEOs have a minimum master's degree. Okay, that's the second thing I want you to think about, okay? Only a fourth of the CEOs have an MBA degree. So think about the three data points I've put for you. So very clearly, a lot of the CEOs are from other functions, unlike India in some cases. So obviously, the CEO is saying, I need a much more focus on business and results and just not marketing. So there is some you know, merit, merit to that uh, argument, okay? I talked of the relaunch being an overhaul, okay? And when you do a relaunch, this is what you typically do. It needs a new formula, needs new packaging, needs a new claim, okay? All three go into making an effective relaunch, okay? Is there a precedent to name change? I look back at business over the last 15 years, there have been precedents. And let's look at what happened with them. We always look at last practice for best practice or next practice, whatever you want to call it, depending on the consultant you've used, okay? We've changed the name of market research to consumer and market insight. We've changed the name of HR manager to people officer. And we've changed the name of logistics manager to supply chain manager. Having seen Indian business for a long time, I would submit we haven't seen more, either quality or quantity insights as a result of this name change. We have not seen better people orientation from anybody in HR. Okay, anybody in HR as a result of this name change. And trucks are not moving faster because you've called somebody supply chain manager. Okay, so names are around, titles are around. Okay, and I believe the CGO could well be in the same, uh, this thing. However, let's look at what's ha what could be the positives of this move. I believe the positives of making the CMO, the chief growth officer, could be focus on the output. Okay, next, I think Sam had one of those advices, uh, number two. More aligned to business needs. Fair enough. Number three, type of company is very important. If you're a single brand, single category company, like Nirma was many years ago, like Colgate is even today, okay, then everybody up and down the chain 
is chief marketing officer or chief growth officer. Because the company lives and dies by the category and the brand. But if you're a multi-product company, a multi-brand company, then the game is very different, okay? And of course, the type of CEO profile. These are the you know, positives, okay? What are the downsides of this change? Okay, first question we should truly ask, wasn't growth a priority before for marketeers? I'd really be surprised if nine out of 10 marketeers put up their hand and said, I was not focused on growth. I don't think so. Growth is a fix which all of us want, irrespective of the job we do, okay? Second, huge danger of being tactical vis-a-vis -vis strategy. Why? You can run a brand to the ground with promotions. So tomorrow you want growth, you can put lots of promotions in. You can do lots of trades, scheming, etc. You can do a lot of it, okay? You can launch meaningless variants. And in my career, I've seen all of them happen. I have a colleague here from Unilever, Pratik. Organics did a one plus one in 1997, Pratik. We tried reviving the brand in 1998 between me and Pratik. Great work by the agency, etc. Brand was still born. It had just been overpromoted to death. Okay, the best work could not pull it back. So when you focus a marketing person sheerly on growth, my concern is he'll overpromote, he'll overtrade, and that's not smart. Okay, next, growth needs other variables too. It needs innovation. It needs execution. It's not going to happen just because you know there's marketing and growth linked in a title. Okay, does it take away the focus from the most important asset called the brand? David Ogilvy said it many years ago. He said advertising must sell. Great brands built over time get you trust, get you growth, get you, you know, the ecosystem. Okay, all three happen. What happens to other CXOs? If I am the head of, you know, let's take supply chain, if I'm the head of information, if I'm the CFO, does it mean that I don't contribute to growth? Why this pecking order which is slightly different? And finally, how different is this from, in some companies, a chief operating officer? Sales and marketing have always been two sides of the growth coin. Sales has been focused on B2B, marketing has been focused on B2C, but in a digital world, the consumer journey, digitally, both of them are owning it today. Okay, that's what's really changed. Okay? So, marketing today has many, many dimensions many more dimensions in the last 30 years than we've seen. The role of marketing and brand management team and marketing managers 25 years ago was only so much. Today it's just broadened. Communication, media, digital, event, sponsorship, product development, the list goes on. And more will be added, okay? So are we expecting too much from a chief marketing officer? I really want you to think about it. That poor guy, are we truly expecting too much? So in the future, the kind of CMO we want is this. He has to be tech savvy, business savvy, data savvy. Okay, so Mandrake plus Superman plus, you know, Phantom rolled into one. Zanadu plus Dankali plus America. Is it possible? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. Okay, because the skill set required for this and the grooming and the education required for this is very different. It's not gonna happen tomorrow morning just because I say it here, okay? It's very, very different. So are we expecting too much from one guy? I think so, okay? It's virtually as if we expect the marketeer to be in a completely different league, okay? I agree that we need a completely new skill set. I do agree, but it'll take time, okay? The adaptability for marketeers is we see a digital consumer. Pre-digital, by and large, the average marketeer was ahead of the average consumer. Post-digital, the average consumer is ahead of the average marketeer. So the average marketeer is chasing and trying to catch up today. That's the first gap you need to bridge. The digital world is a very different world with its consumer. Second, we have very different clock speeds today. Very, very different. You almost have to react by the hour, by the minute, if you want to be successful, okay? You need dramatic fast cycle innovation. Old innovation patterns don't work, okay? You need to operate on the fly and really make it work. Business models and profitability, consistently changing thanks to digital. In every industry, 
digital has had a serious impact on business model. Serious impact. Some people realize it faster, some people don't realize it. And finally, you need to build ecosystem partnerships. Because the days of independent growth are over. FMCG used to be extremely arrogant 20 years ago, saying, I don't need modern trade, I don't need this, etc. I would challenge any FMCG marketer to say the same today. He needs, Mira is sitting here from Big Basket, the FMCG marketer needs her. Somebody from Big Bazaar, the FMCG marketer needs her, him or her. So today is the era of dependent growth. You cannot grow on your own. That lesson needs to come through to market you. Okay? So these are the challenges which we see today. So in summary, what would I say? A rose by any other name, I don't think smells the same. First point, chief marketing officer, chief growth officer, okay? You have much more to do than just a title change, okay? Growth is everyone's responsibility, okay? Growth for every company is a generic strategy. Just like focus is. Everybody tells you focus. It's not that you are unfocused. It's what do you do after you focus your portfolio to whatever you want it to be. It's what you do after that which is important, okay? And all growth comes when you invest in current products, services, and geographies, when you create new products, new geographies, new services, and when you get efficiency out of where you are operating. The first and the last account for 55 to 60% of growth, okay? They are not in the you know, basket right now of any single function, okay? So that's what I would say. Next, it is not about the title, but the skills needed for it, and the skills needed are very different for a future market year, okay? Where will the talent come from for this? I'm not so sure, okay? Growth comes in a company when you have a collective mindset at the top, number one reason. Number two, you have a good brand and a good experience. And number three, number three resource allocation. Just calling the market here, a chief growth officer, two of the variables he does not have control over, okay? So I would argue that I think it's not feasible Nomenclate him as chief growth officer and then expect sales to happen, okay? Where will we get the talent? I don't know. I want to end with giving you a sense of what could other changes be? MBA, the Master of Business Administration, has been a degree which has been around for 100 years. Very few MBAs do anything to do with administration today. The degree continues. You don't need to nomenclate the MBA as something else. The job is pretty obvious what you need to do in any company that you are in, okay? Every job will have one or two dimensions which are absolutely critical for it. Would we nomenclate the governor of the Reserve Bank as the governor of inflation? Would we nomenclate the governor of Reserve Bank as the governor of foreign exchange? Sure, both are important. But that doesn't mean you take only one variable and put it there. And that's where I believe the collect mi collective mindset needs to come. So I believe that titles and job descriptions descriptions exist for a purpose. But if you take it too long and too far and put in a word and expect the whole department, the individual and the company to pivot to growth tomorrow just because you've designated marketing as growth, that's very wishful thinking. I'd like you to think about that. Thank you, Sam, again. I'm two minutes ahead of my time. All the best, ladies and gentlemen.